Hello and welcome to another Matura English Express stream. My name is Chris and today it's all about exams. Welcome back um, to this stream. As I've already told you in the, in the introduction, today we're gonna talk about exams. Of course, we're gonna talk about the oral exam. The oral exam you have to take after you finished your, co your course or after you've done your course. Um, we're gonna discuss the following points. At first, I'm gonna give you an overview of the A-level oral exam. So its structure, what you should know, and uh, what you know, uh, which, which tasks you should complete, and so on and so on. Um, what does an exam look like is also a part of today's stream so that you just get an overview of what an exam looks like. And a very crucial aspect we're going to discuss today is how you are assessed in the exam. Um, and then we're going to talk a little about a bit talk a bit about how can I study for or you in this case for the English A level oral exam okay let's dive into the first point here or the first topic so the overview of the English A level uh, oral exam and what we expect so that you're kind of have an overview of what is going to happen to you in a few months. So when you're in the exam room, so where the exams take place, um, you're normally asked to draw from two topics. So you have to pick two little um, sheets. Uh, that have prepared for you, uh, which um, have the topics written on them, and you draw one of them. No, you draw draw two of them normally, and then you can choose one of them. So, of course, if you have two topics that you really don't like, bad luck. But normally, since you should be prepared really well. Um, it shouldn't be any problem. Um, after that, after you cho after you chose your topic, um, it's preparation time. And preparation time, of course, is there for you to prepare the exam, especially the monologue, but also the dialogue. Um, normally, you've been given a an article for the dialogue which we gonna mention later or I gonna show you what's the monologue and dialogue thingy about um, this article provides you with, with necessary information for the exam for the dialogue uh, part of the exam and during the preparation time you are asked or you should read um, through the article. Um, should summarize important points. Should write out few important aspects, and then of course add your own knowledge. Write down what you know about the topic, what you want to mention in the exam, and then after you have completed this task successfully. It's your turn, basically, and you um, are tested or assessed, basically. It all starts with the introduction, a monologue, a dialogue, and a follow-up discussion. So, the introduction is all about introducing yourself, um, what you've done in the past, present, and future. And the monologue is... Um, already about the topic you've chosen. 
Uh, I'm going to show you that in a more detailed view on one of the next slides. Um, and then, of course, after you finish the exam, you, you'll finally get, at some point of time, your final grade. Normally, of course, they have to discuss the grade and all, all the board of examiners and so on. They have to discuss your grade with your examiner, which is normally your lecturer. And then I hope that you pass the exam, of course. So that's how an exam looks like. It's always structured like this. So at the top of the very top, there should be the title, of course, of the topic and so on. But the general structure, as you've seen in the slide before, or on the slide before, um, there's an introduction. Then there's task one, task two, follow-up discussion. Task one is the monologue. In this case, it's about sport and modern lifestyle. The monologue is a role play, which means you are in the role, in this case, you're a professional CrossFit athlete and you kind of want to... Um, across the importance of sport in a mo uh, in our modern lifestyles um, okay so you're pretending you're a CrossFit athlete and you know everything about um, the importance of sports and how to best combine it with our modern lifestyle and so on and then of course you should work or yeah elaborate on those three bullet points in this case what characterizes our modern lifestyle the positive impacts and of being fit and active and how to motivate yourself to be more active and to do more sport that's the first part you only have four minutes so that's the time limit you shouldn't um, be under four minutes but you shouldn't exceed those four minutes either so you, of course if it's four minutes 30 or five minutes I think it's okay but just keep an eye on those uh, four minutes you can prepare um, the topic in a way that you kind of are able to speak about it four minutes of course you're you don't know about those bullet points but in beforehand, of course, but you are sort of able to practice um, the topic beforehand. So once you've done uh, task one, you move on to task two, which is dialogue. Um, in this case, it's about the importance of a healthy lifestyle. As always, as I've mentioned before, the dialogue always comes with an attached or the exam paper comes with an attached article which should be used or must be used for the task for the dialogue task as well as your own ideas as it is as is as it is written out here as well as your own ideas during the conversation okay so You've read through the article, you have added your own knowledge, you've written it down on the sheet of paper, which you can use, of course, um, during the preparation time, you've written all the stuff down and now you can use the paper and stuff. And now, after task two is completed, there is a follow-up discussion. Normally, the board of examiners will ask you. So, normally, the board of examiners examiners consists of two people, and one of them or both will ask you some general questions about the topic sport and recreation in this case. Oh, sorry. But, of course, they're really general questions, as I've already mentioned. And you shouldn't kind of be frightened or kind of nervous because of the follow-up discussion. So, focus on task one and task two. 
And what I forgot the introduction also mention your future career, your plans and so on. So how are you assessed in the exam? I think that's a very important um, uh, information for you, how you're actually assessed in the exam. I think if you don't know, it is way more um, difficult to kind of study or um, kind of prepare for the exam. Actually, you're assessed with um, a few aspects, with a few aspects, categories. Uh, one of them is, or there are basically five of those. Um, one is the um, how the examinee communicates and interacts. So, are you able to lead the conversation? Do you need help from the examiner? So, do you sometimes need help from the examiner? Do you need help uh, from the examiner? So, you really, um, yeah, you really uh, rely on the support of the examiner, which is not that good. Um, then, of course, vocabulary and mode of expression. Um, you should know about the topic vocabulary and you kind of should have known, uh, should know specific phrases for the topic, for the exam you could use and how to bring across an argument, uh, bring across an, an idea or an, uh, an information or in your stance and so on. Um, also content, what you're talking about is important. So not only talk about the very obvious things of the topic, but also think about more specific information you might provide the examiners, um, which is quite helpful, I think, for the exam in an exam situation. As you've just have this one moment where you can show what you've got, basically. Um, grammar, as always, if you know the grammar structures, if you have um, the knowledge of how to use the language correct uh, in a correct way, you know, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, then you're good to go. Um, if you if you know all about sentence structure, so and how to structure sentences when you're speaking, that's good and you're fine you should be fine with the exam and of course your grammar is accessed uh, accessed no assessed um, so for example if you use a different tense when you're speaking about the past that's really bad and yeah you should know about it and just focus on what you're doing and should be fine practice a lot beforehand the exam and the last aspect that is considered for your assessment in the exam is pronunciation and intonation. Of course, pronunciation and intonation um, isn't as important as the others, but it is a point that is assessed in the exam and you should know how to pronounce the vocabulary that you've learned. And intonation, of course, it's something also to practice, um, but I think pronunciation is, is way more important than intonation. But of course, if you're um, prone to uh, being quite monotonous, uh, a monotonous speaker, uh, which means that you uh, speak at the same um, volume, the same tone actually it's kind of boring for the examiner so maybe work on it that you just yeah also emphasis some some words such as if there is but in a sentence you can em put emphasis on the word but on the conjunction but which 
of course makes it i think more um lively to makes the conversation more lively and and kind of attracts the um listener more to uh pay attention to what you're actually saying of course just um quick to um how you're assessed to add something there is a scale actually that goes from one to five and one is the best and five is the, the worst and yeah that's basically how it works um how the examiners assess you and now also an important topic which is not only about the exam and how the exam looks like and so on but it's how you can best study for the exam of course it is everyone is different and 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 um studying for an exam isn't can't be generalized but of course in general you should be able to know all 10 topics i think it's quite obvious and subtopics are you able to speak freely about them which is or should be a goal of you um write down the most crucial aspects of every topic Route, write down the most important phrases and vocabulary of each topic, which is also important. Read, speak and watch a lot and listen a lot, of course. I think that's uh, one of the aspects we um, will tell you over and over again, just to kind of remind you that it is really important to do a lot of speaking. Um, uh, do a lot of reading, speaking and watching, of course. Um, try to practice at least one of the four skills on a daily basis. Doesn't have to be two hours of practicing, but at least, I don't know, half an hour or 20 minutes. Um, also important, Try to find a study buddy, so a friend that also does this course or maybe is in school or something like this and also has to study or, yeah, study English or has the A-level in school or something. Just find a study buddy where you can exchange. It makes things way more um, easier for you. Um, try to educate yourself with the help of articles, books um, that deal with the topics you should know all things about. And yeah, articles, books are a good resource to do so. So, catch up with your knowledge, educate yourself. That's basically it from today's stream. I'd like to thank you again and wish you a very pleasant evening. Goodbye.